Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome back to The Correct Views. It is Sam I.B. reporting for The Media Speaks. Go to TheMediaSpeaks.com. Um, those of you that are celebrating Valentine's Day over the weekend because you had to work, happy Valentine's Day, make sure you see the last video. I survived a brutal attack. I'm saying it with a smile on my face. Go. It's one of the funnier ones that I've ever done. And this isn't funny. It's on to the regular correct views. All right. Obama is a state of the union that government needs to indoctrinate children at an earlier age. Before I go into this, I mean, I, I am a product of the public school system. And I can tell you that most of what I've learned... It, A lot of it I've had to teach myself. I mean, it, it, it started off good, and then later on it became, you know, if, if you didn't play sports, you weren't worth anything. It didn't matter. I'm in Canton, Ohio. For those of you that follow sports very closely, you know exactly what I'm speaking of. Um, again, before I hate when I do this, because then everyone thinks that you're talking about killing Jews. So when I bring up Hitler, can you please forget that he was anything but a fascist? Thank you. Hitler, in order to take power, one of the things he did was make it possible for parents who were helping the war effort on their side to go ahead and have their children dropped off at school all day long. And they could leave them there for days if they needed to and they were able to indoctrinate them and teach them the ideals of Nazism. My parallel here is that by doing this, Obama and future, and other people I should say that think like him, both now and in the future, they are going to be able to say exactly what these children are taught, how they are taught it, and they want this to happen at earlier and earlier in age, earlier and earlier ages, so that they can um, justify teaching them that guns are bad and then they can take them away. Or better yet, the kids will never ever own them. And the government has minds that they can mold and to teach that this socialistic, uh, approaching theocratic uh, uh, kingdom that we have here, uh, <laughs> satanic kingdom, uh, not really, but th this dreadful state that we are in, mixing corporatism with socialism and communism, the, the, the way that the government and the corporations work with the military, they want to be able to teach the children at earlier and earlier ages that this is a good thing. During his State of the Union address last night, it says, Obama called for a universal preschool education to ensure that all four-year-olds have access to quality preschool, according to ABC News. The plan builds on Head Start and state pre-K programs, that's pre-kindergarten, that target low-income children. It will dish out government lugress, it will dish out a government lugress to middle-income families to entice participation. The objective clearly is to get as many children into the clutches of the state educational system as early as possible. Now, a lot of people that are low-income and I have been low income most of my life. Uh, the last few years have been decent, but I, I people I used to work for like fifteen or twenty dollars a day for eight hours a day driving taxi. Sometimes I'd pay a hundred dollars to do it. It was dreadful. Um, I've done telemarketing. I've done pizza. You name it. I've been there. God willing, I will never have to do so again. But. People that don't have a lot of money are going to be prone to think that this is a good idea because then they can get the kids um, off into a place where they can learn and develop because that's how this is being sold to the parents. It's being sold to the average parent, again, particularly low income because the more well-to-do can simply afford a daycare or whatever. This is being sold to them as a way to have their children become more intelligent much sooner than they would if they went into the regular system. But that's not what they're doing. What they're going to do is teach them more about their indoctrination in terms of their political viewpoint than anything. They're going to teach them about the alphabet or writing, arithmetic. You get the point. There's the information. Do something with it. Um, this is from Market Watch. Prophecy is the next pope, the last pope. This is ridiculous, for one thing. I mean, before I read this article, let me just toss this out there. Because people, the way 
to avoid the prophecy is to avoid doing what the prophecy says. For instance, I used this quote when I was talking about jumping over the border from the movie Kismet, also a play, a book, yes. If it is written that I shall die in Baghdad, then how shall I avoid it? By staying out of Baghdad, sir. This is how you stop this from happening. I'm going to get into it. It was predicted that the next, that the last pope was going to be named Peter. Well, one of the people that they're looking at to elect into the pope is going to be named Peter. And this pope, according to the prediction, is supposed to usher in the some of the most dreadful times predicted in the Bible. Well, I don't... We all remember how well Y2K went, right? How about that uh, Nibiru hitting us? Well, in the little paradigm that exists of people who believe these sorts of things, maybe the way to not have this guy be the last pope is to not elect a pope in this cycle that is named Peter. Shazam, Sparky! Use the thinking part of your brain! Los Angeles forecasting stock moves is one thing. At least there is only a certain number of possible outcomes. But forecasting all the future popes. Yet that is what St. Malak... Malachki, Malarkey, M-A-L-A-C-H-Y, a 12th century Irish bishop apparently managed to do. In 1139, he is said to have received a vision of all future pontiffs, which he then listed with a Latin motto of each of the future bishops of Rome. Now I'm going to go on a little bit so that you can understand the story here, because I'm not Catholic either, and this can be a bit confusing. For instance, John Paul I is listed as Dimediated Lune, meaning of the middle of the moon. Modern, modern interpreters say that this prediction that John Paul I's reign would begin during the half moon and last just one month, which it did. His successor, John Paul II, is described by St. Malarkey, Malachly, as the laborer of soils, or of the sun's labor, supposedly because he was born during the solar eclipse. Benedict was announced his resignation Monday is Gloria Olive, or Glory of the Olive, allegedly because his name is Benedict, is taken from the St. Benedict, whose monastic order uses the olive branch as a symbol. Well... The up-and-coming pontiff, it says, will be known as Peter of Rome, and he will lead the church to the destruction of the eternal city in the final judgment. Well, call it a hunch. Don't pick Peter! Idiots! All right, look. This is from The Sun. KFC hit by chicken chem food scare. And I'm not going to be a hypocrite. I eat fast food. I actually like fast food. But I have been trying to do so less and less because of what is put in it. I wish I could just pay 50 cents more and get a normal piece of chicken. I don't care if it's fried. Contrary to what most people are going to tell you, if you fry healthy meat, real organic meat, once in a while, you're not going to die. I mean, you can overdo anything, but it's, that's not, it's what they're frying it in, and it's what's in the meat that they're frying. Drop in profits after animals excessively pumped with antibiotics. Now, I'm not one of these people that think that there is no place for antibiotics. If the animal is sick, you, get, you give it antibiotics if it's needed and, and segregated from the rest of the herd. But this notion that this canon stop antibiotic use or, you know, is ridiculous because it's creating a bit of a resistance in certain diseases. And again, I'm not anti-antibiotic. I think there are, uh, I think they, a lot of people that think they need them do, and as I've mentioned in other shows, uh, viral infections can become bacterial infections if you leave the phlegm sit in your chest. So this notion that antibiotics do not do anything for viruses is false. It actually does. However, there are ways to keep your immune system boosted. Go to themediaspeaks.com and look up my article on how to prevent a cold. KFC has taken a pounding after an investigation found that suppliers in China had provided chickens pumped full of excessive levels of antibiotics. Have you ever noticed that there are certain names that come up every time something awful is happening? The Rockefellers, for instance, are tied to every rotten thing that has to do uh, with the America, uh, with the world. Well, China is always associated with something dreadful. Yet we keep sending our jobs there 
And they do such a good job with everything, too. Parent company Yum Brands, which also owns Pizza Hut and Taco Bell, have been hit with a drop in profits in the wake of the food safety scare. And last month, local media reported that one of China's largest suppliers to McDonald's and KFC had brought sick chicken, had bought sick chickens from farms and then sold them to the food outlets. With 5,300 restaurants in China, the Far East country is one of Yum's biggest markets, accounting for more than half of its sales. Well, maybe I have the idea for that. Maybe, since China already has all of our jobs anyway, if they're going to eat Kentucky Fried Chicken, and since Kentucky, the last time I checked, was in America, maybe you should buy your damn chickens from us! Oh, but no, they wouldn't do that. We'd do it to them. And we're probably, I'm not surprised it's not in our food. It probably is. This multiculturalism thing isn't working, people. The New World Order is a scam. Anthony Gucciardi, Infowars.com. Four ingredients way worse than horse meat. Again, before I go into it, why is a horse worth so much more than a cow? Now, I'm not in favor of lying to people, but I, I, I eat beef. I've given it up for Lent. I don't know how that's going to go, but I, I'm, I've given up... Uh, uh, of meat before, but why? If we eat a cow, flaming on, look at the last video, Valentine's Day, why is it so bad to eat a horse? What? What is it? Untermensch or something? This is ridiculous. Are you likely aware Burger King UK recently admitted that its famous fast food symbol, the Whopper, and its other burgers were actually made using horse meat? Who cares? I do wish they'd advertise it, and I hope Burger King UK really takes a beating for doing this. But this notion that we divide the worth of animals based on whether or not we think they're cute, we divide the worth of people based on what religion they are, we divide the worth of ourselves based on how much money we make, we look for so many ways to separate ourselves that there's no unity anywhere, and now you look at the food that we're eating, and they're lying to us about what it is, and rather than the fact that they're lying, people are making a big deal out of the fact that it was a horse. I don't care if people want to eat horse. The point is that our major corporations are lying all over the world. And it goes on to mention that there are four ingredients that are worse than horse meat. And I'm going to go ahead and say exactly what they are because they're in our food that we eat all the time. Electronic cigarette filler, synthetic laxative is one of the things. Um, you may have found memories, you may have fond memories of enjoying a Wendy's Frosty, my favorite of the fast food poison places. But the lengthy and gut-wrenching list of chemicals that create what is labeled as a milkshake contain more than one bad surprise. Of course, it's got GMO corn syrup and artificial flavorings, it says. Other thickening agents. It takes 14 ingredients to create the fast food. And it has a laxative chemical and electronic cigarette filler known as propylene glycol is among the 25 ingredients that make up this special frosty. <sighs> Wonderful news. So, I mean, it does do one thing, because even though I, I eat their spicy chicken poison, I will avoid their uh, electronic cigarette filler poison. I said filter, I meant filler. Two, flower bleaching agent used in yoga mats formed foamed plastics. I've done this in other shows, but I'll do it real quick. If you were to use this yoga mat ingredient to produce food in another nation like Singapore, it says you would face fines up to $45,000 and 15 years in prison. In the United States, you can charge money and market the creation as a McRib. It contains GMOs, deadly chemicals, harmful fillers, and an ingredient known as... Azorbicarbonamide, A-Z-O-D-I-C-A-R-D-B-O-N-A-M-I-D-E, banned in Australia, Europe, and Singapore. It is used in the creation of foam plastic yoga mats. Three silicone breast implant filler. I'm not going to read all of these. It's dimethypolysicazane, D-I-M-E-T-H-Y-L-P-O-L-Y-S-I-L-O-X-A-N-E, it's a chemical used for breast implants. And last but not least, we all love the chemical salad. 
If choosing the salad of the fast food establishment is a healthier choice, then read this. If you follow the marketing campaigns, you would believe this to be the case. McDonald's healthy salads, for example, but the, the cilantro lime glaze and the orange glaze used on many of these salads contain propylene glycol, the chemical discussed in number one. It also contains MSGs and disodium insulinate which has been linked to many wonderful things, cancer, and so on and so forth. So there you go. And if you got bored by listening to me spell out what those chemicals are, then maybe you should debate how much of it you actually eat. Last thing I want to get to, SMH.com, is coke additive, is coke addictive coroner, coroner takes on soft drinks giant. Let me say, yes, I believe it is addictive. Christelle, my beautiful girlfriend, the behind-the-scenes queen of the correct views, is addicted to pop. I finally got her taking vitamin D and uh, echinacea and all the stuff that's in the article I mentioned. But I can't get her off pop. And I still drink pop once in a while. If I'm not having a few cocktails, I'll mix it with rum. But my point is that breaking what used to be a very heavy pop addiction to me was very tricky. And the way I did it, by the way, is only drinking it when I absolutely crave it, which is what I still do. A New Zealand coroner has taken out the world's most valuable brand name in a case that is likely to reverberate around the world. Southland coroner David Crerar has found that mother of eight, Natasha Harris, died from drinking too much Coke. Christelle is in such denial with her addiction that she tried to tell me it was Coke. No, they mean the pop. Nice try. Miss Harris of... Ivor Cargill died age 30 in February 2010. Evidence at her inquest showed that she drank up to 10 liters of classic Coke every day, equal to more than twice the recommended daily safe limit of caffeine and almost one kilogram of sugar. It said she would get edgy if she didn't have it, she would have trouble if she would not drink it, and he blamed the soft drink company, and they were not... The, he said that the soft drink company was not to blame for her death, although the product was a contributing factor. And they want labels on the pop for their sugar and content. I agree with that. I, I, I'm, not for, I'm not for banning anything. If you want to be an idiot and put heroin in your veins, you go right ahead. Um, I am not in favor of banning anything, but I am in favor of labeling things. And if you're not, then where were you getting outraged when the PMRC was putting a bunch of stupid stickers on record labels? Um, they label those, I mean, and they're, in my opinion, heavy metal is harmless if you have good parents. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I think it needs to be labeled, and I do think it probably is addictive, because I know people that simply cannot go without it, and I used to drink copious amounts of it. It's oftentimes done when you're poor, like I was, and couldn't afford uh, to necessarily buy vitamin water, and some of the things that I proudly endorse now. You're listening to The Correct Views. Thank you for doing so, friends. Good night. God bless. Please donate to the show if you can. Advertise on the show. If you have a charity, let me know. I'll cut you a great deal. I'll probably just do it free. Um, guys, everything you give to me goes to a better show. Thank you for listening. Sam I.B. with The Media Speaks. It's The Correct Views. Good night. God bless.